If you loved American Gangster, you're going to love Godfather of Harlem. Now, did Bumpy Johnson, the Godfather of Harlem, ever try to kill Chin Giganti, the real power in New York? Let's find out. Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. For those of you that are paying attention, you can see I'm back in the studio after, I believe it was 18 or 19 days on the road. Very productive, mostly work, a little bit of leisure time, spent a lot of time down uh, on the um, southeastern coast, I would say. I think you know where that is. Yeah, I was in Florida. Spent some time with Patrick Bed David. I think that's a giveaway, Sammy, Patrick Bed David. It's moving along. You're going to be very pleased at some point in time when you do see this thing. But yeah, we spent a lot of time together. It's good to be back home. It's good to be back in the studio. It's good to be back to work. So what are we going to be doing? Mob Movie Monday. That's what this is all about today. And I got a special one, one that I like a lot. And uh, hopefully many of you have seen it. Even though it's more fiction than fact, it's still a great series, Godfather of Harlem. Now, when you're doing a series like this, there were two seasons. I got to kind of wrap it up. I mean, I can't do each individual episode will be here forever, but I kind of wrap up the premise and what I think about it and some of the characters and so on and so forth. So let me tell you this. This is more a work of fiction than it is fact, even though they mention all legitimate real names. And you know the names for those of you that are watching the series. And by the way, if you haven't seen it, watch it. Very entertaining great acting, just a good premise. You'll enjoy it. If you like the mob genre and you like things like that, you'll enjoy it. But it's totally fictionalized. You know, basically, the story is that Bumpy Johnson, who I'll get into, who was a guy in Harlem who was a drug dealer, was fighting with the Italian mafia over the drug business in Harlem. And I can tell you, that's not true. Absolutely not true. There wasn't any big fights about, you know, the drug business in Harlem. Chin Giganti, who I did a story on uh, a couple of days ago, he's a central character in this. He was the one, allegedly, at least initially, that Bumpy Johnson was really bumping heads with and having a war over the drug business in Harlem. Wasn't true. A lot of this is not true. Fiction, but again, great entertainment. I think there's a disclaimer on every episode saying that some of the characters might be real, but the story they take dramatic liberty with, something of that you know, nature was posted. And I can tell you this right now, so don't believe everything that you see on television. Be entertained, that's what it's for. But you know, don't try to take what's fiction and make fact out of it. And some people say, aha, Mike, you see, the Italians were involved in drugs in Harlem. Not true, wasn't true. The story is not true. But again, very entertaining. Let's go through some of the characters. I think the way we'll do this, again, rather than get into the episode, I'll talk about some of the characters. Some of them I'm familiar with, may not know them all, but I was familiar with them. Was a part of, I was alive during some of this, even though a lot of it occurred, you know, before my time in that life, for sure. But I was around, I heard the news. Uh, I've got a father that was there throughout all of this. I later became a member, so I know what was going on. So I'll talk about it and give you my knowledge and my expertise on the subject. Let's go through the characters. And I've got something here to help me because there's a bunch of them. Forrest Whitaker played Bumpy Johnson. Who is Bumpy Johnson? And by the way, Forrest Whitaker's great. Terrific actor. I like him a lot. He played Bumpy Johnson, who was an African-American, a black guy in Harlem. He originally started out as a numbers guy. He was an associate, I would say, of Madame Stephanie St. Clair, who was a big numbers runner, and you know what the numbers are, in Harlem. And he started out with her. Eventually, he got into the drug business. He never got into any war with the Italians. He did get in a war with Dutch Schultz for control over the narcotics business in Harlem. A lot of murders, a lot of bodies went by the wayside as a result of this war that went on. I believe Dutch Schultz won the war. 
Bumpy Johnson had a lot of trouble. He was convicted several times. He ended up going to jail. I think he did his time in Alcatraz. They were really out to get him. So he did a lot of time, so on and so forth. He eventually died of a heart attack. I think the story was after he got out of prison, he was in a restaurant or a diner. He was eating, just fell over, collapsed. He died of cardiac arrest. I think around the 60s, 68, something like that. Again, they made a very entertaining story about this. Vincent D'Onofrio, somebody that I just love the way he acts. You know, he's terrific. He played Chin Gigante. And he was at war, according to Godfather of Harlem, you know, over the drug business in Harlem. Again, not factual, not true. I told you about Chin, you know, my experience with him in the last sit down that I did. But he was a terrific character. What was very interesting here, he had a daughter that was in love with a black guy. And back then, there was prejudice, I have to say that, you know, not only among Italians, but there was this black-white thing. And in the show, Vincent D'Onofrio was very upset that his daughter was dating a black guy, and he had the black guy killed. And this caused a real difficult relationship, obviously, between his daughter, who was a terrific character, by the way. She was very independent, very outspoken, strong character. I loved the character that she played. This caused a real rift between her and her dad. She actually hated him over it. She didn't care for her mother either as a result of this guy being killed because she really loved him. And it was sad the way it went down. But Vincent D'Onofrio was great. I think at times, you know, he just, he really went crazy. He might have overacted a little bit. I don't know. But he was great. I love him. As a matter of fact, you know I'm doing a TV series. I would welcome him being in that series because he's great. He plays these roles terrifically. Paul Servino, another favorite of mine. Of course, everybody likes Paul Servino. Remember him from Goodfellas. You know, he played the central character there. He was terrific. And he plays Frank Costello. He didn't strike me as the Frank Costello type, but from what I knew of Frank, but was a tremendous role again. Was Frank Costello involved in any of this? I don't think so. Never heard it throughout my time. Never read anything about it. Never heard it from my dad. So I think they just inserted him, his character in this, just because he's a good character. Another great character, Giancarlo Esposito. He was terrific as Congressman Adam Clayton Powell. I love Giancarlo Esposito. He's a terrific actor. Adam Clayton Powell was a tremendous figure back then. I remember him. He was always in the news. He was the first black ever elected to Congress. You know, terrific. He was a Democrat. And I heard some things about him on the street. I think he at one time got caught up in some kind of investigation. It hurt him a little bit, but then he bounced back. But he was a terrific character. He was very outspoken. I think he was a, a Baptist uh, preacher at one point in time. I think his father might have been a Baptist minister or pastor, whatever. But he plays a terrific character. He's a central character. He's involved with Bumpy Johnson. He's involved, you know, in a lot of the stuff that's going on. He tries to keep it legit, you know, the way he acts. But... He's in the middle of a lot of stuff, and he's great in the show. you got to love him. Chaz Palminteri, my dear friend. I spoke to him this morning. He's actually doing a couple of things. I know for those of you that are paying attention, you saw that he was involved in the thing with Sammy and I. You're going to love him, by the way. He's tremendous in this also. By the way, this is not, you know, something that we acted out. This was a real thing between Sammy and I. But Chaz added something special to it because Chaz knows the street life. He understands. And what he adds to it was just terrific. You're going to love him. He plays Joe Bonanno. And again, I don't know that Joe Bonanno was involved in any of this either. I do know that Joe Bonanno was possibly involved in, in the drug business a little bit. You know, an interesting story about uh, Bonanno uh, with another character that's portrayed in here, and that is Michael Rispoli, another actor that I love. Again, I would welcome him in our TV series. He's terrific. In the, he's just so natural. He just plays the part so natural. Well, he played Joe Maioko. For those of you that don't know Joe Maioko, he was a, a Profaci guy later the Colombo family. He was a Profaci guy. He was an underboss to Profaci. I think he was a boss of the family for quite some time. He and Bonanno were in cahoots. Big problems between the two of them. They almost got killed because they tried to wipe out some guys in the commission. You know, they had a plot, you know, to kill a couple of the guys, Carlo Gambino, Lucchese, a few other guys that were going to kill him. They actually went to Joe Colombo to assassinate these people. Colombo, if you know the story, he actually turned them in. And that was a problem. Myoko almost got killed, but the commission let him live. He came in. He admitted to it. They let him live. I think they gave him a $50,000 fine and told him to retire. 
Joe Bonanno, same thing. He ran away. He went to Canada when all of this came down, when they found out about the plot, when the commission did, the bosses did. They allowed him to live if he moved out to Arizona and kept quiet. That's what he did. You know the story there. Myoko plays an interesting character in this. Again, he wasn't a central character in all of this with Harlem. They threw all of these guys in there. There was a very interesting scene that I think you'll like. When they had all of these guys, allegedly the commission, they had Bonanno, they had Mayoko, they had Costello, they had the chin. They're all sitting down and they're deciding what they're going to do with Bumpy Johnson and how they're going to control the drug business in Harlem. It was a fabricated scene, but it was a great scene to see them all together. One that I enjoyed, even though I knew that it was fiction. Great scene with them. Another great scene, again, you know, a couple of scenes that were between Chin Gigante and his daughter, they were terrific scenes because these are great actors. Chaz was great. He played Joe Bonanno. He got on the wrong side of Bumpy Johnson. They were kind of at it with each other, and Chaz always does a great role. He did a good job here, too. Oh, and by the way, Lucy Fry, she played Stella Giganti. She was the daughter, and again, she was terrific. I had never really seen her before this, but I think she did a terrific job. She got a great look. She was just great in that role. Another guy who really caught my attention, a guy by the name of Nigel Thatch, he played Malcolm X. Who was Malcolm X? Nation of Islam. He eventually got assassinated. He kind of went against the Nation of Islam. He connected with Cassius Clay, who's another character in this, who became Muhammad Ali at one point in time. Great scenes with him. And he looked so much like Malcolm X, I remember. But he played a brilliant role. I thought he was one of the best actors in this series. I really enjoyed watching him. He was terrific. So, you know, all of this combined, it was just a great series. So again, I'm not going to go episode by episode, scene by scene. I'm going to tell you that the actors were all terrific. They really were. Again, the story was a fabrication, but very, very entertaining. Everybody did a great job. I think you'll enjoy it. I'm hearing that there's going to be a season three. Uh, it might be in the process of being filmed right now. Don't know where they're going to take it. You know, they've done a lot to this point in these first two seasons. But very, very entertaining. And I love these series, man. You know, I love this one. I love Boardwalk Empire, uh, Sopranos. All of these are great. They do a great job. I got to tell you, you know, the writing today is just brilliant. And everything starts with the writing. The writers today are brilliant. Some of these shows that they do, where do they think of these things? Game of Thrones, amazing writing. And, of course, the execution of it is terrific also. But some of these shows are just so well done. Breaking Bad. I mean, gosh, you know, tremendous series. I mean, they carried it for so many seasons and was so brilliantly done. So, you know, television to me, or, or these series rather, have become really the premier uh, part of entertainment right now. I just love watching them. I get engrossed in them. And you take them for what they're worth. Like I said, Godfather of Harlem. Don't start saying, Michael, did this really happen? Did that really happen? Most of it did not happen. But watch it for your enjoyment. I think you're going to love it. So... That's it for today. Again, I can get into it scene by scene. It doesn't pay to do that. That's it for today. Uh, I want to thank everybody. You know, again, we're really growing in leaps and bounds. Subscribers are coming on, you know, every day. We're doing, we're just doing great numbers, and it's because you enjoy the content, and we really appreciate that. I have to say this, my inner circle, I can't wait to see you all. We have a free boat trip for our inner circle. October 2nd, we got a big yacht. They're all coming out. We're going to meet everybody. They're bringing their families. It's going to be terrific. I can't wait. That's what you get for becoming part of the inner circle. We're going to go to slices. You're going to have a slice of pizza. You're going to taste it. And then you're all going to become my marketers because you're going to tell everybody how much you love the pizza. Uh, we're doing that, and uh, we just can't wait. Join the inner circle. I'm telling you, you're going to love it. These people are encouraging one another. We're putting so much content in there, and I think people are getting a lot out of it. My crew, we're almost up to 20,000 now. That's the free part. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's very engaging, and I think people, again, are getting a lot out of it. So that's it for today, and, um, you know, just keep watching. I know you're asking me, when is the Sammy thing going to happen? Stay tuned. I'm not totally in control of it, but I know what's going on. You're going to love it. And, people, this is not scripted. You know, let me tell you this. Sammy and I, we just have different views of our former life. He's very passionate about his I'm very passionate about mine, and that comes out. Yeah, we do buck heads a little bit. There's no question about it. But you know what? We're also respectful because that's how it was in those days when you sat down. You didn't call each other names and all this kind of stuff. We didn't get into all of that. But you know what? It gets heated at times, but, you know, we resolved it. And I think you're going to see it and you're going to enjoy it and you're going to get a real education out of it because it's the real deal. That's it for today. How do I always leave you? Be safe. Be healthy. 
God bless. Yes, I will see you next time. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel because you get preferential treatment. You get notified and alerted first when things come out. A lot of stuff coming out. Thank you.